what we need to do. All right, so first thing, I like to start with left-hand side. So as you know, our left-hand side is approximately equal to, it says cos 3x, cos 3x. All right, this is our left-hand side. Now, as we know, cos 3x, cos 3x is equal to, we can rewrite that as the cos of 2x plus x. This is cos 3x, the cos of 2x plus x. But then we know what is the compound angle formula for this. Cos 2x plus x is given by, this is given by cos 2x cos x. This is given by cos 2x cos x minus sine 2x sine x minus sine 2x sine x. Aha. Uh -huh. But then now we realize that we reach where we need to use the double angle formula. The double angle formula for cos 2x, there are three of, three of them. You know, you have two cos square x minus one. You have one minus two sine square x and you have cos square x minus sine square x. Which one will you use is up to you. I will use two cos square x minus one. Why? Because I'm multiplying it by cos and I want everything to be in terms of cos. So I'm gonna write two cos square x, two cos square x minus one. That is a do double angle formula for cos two x. And it is being multiplied by cos x. All right, nice and easy. It's being multiplied by cos x minus sine two x as you know it. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So we have 2 sine x cosine x, 2 sine x cos x, and that is being multiplied by sine x. Nice and easy. This is being multiplied by sine x. And so what we do now is we expand out these now. Expanding through, we're going to get 2 cos square x times cos x, that's going to give us 2 cos cube x. This is 2 cos cube x minus cos x times 1 is cos x. All right, cos x times 1 is cos x. Then minus, now 2 sine x cos x times sine x becomes sine square, because sine times sine is sine square. So it becomes 2 sine square x. 2 sine square x times the cosine of x. Now here's where the trouble comes in now because we have everything in terms of cos, but then we have this sine square right here. But sine square is one minus cos square. So let's go ahead and write that. Sine square is one minus cos square. So this is going to become two cos cube. This becomes two cos cube x minus cos x. And then we replace the sine square here with one minus cos square. So it becomes two times one minus cos square x. One minus cos square x. And it's still being multiplied by, of course, cos x. So all we need to do now is expand over here. So we need to expand it. And when we expand it, what we're going to get is two cos cube x. 2 cos cube x minus cos x. 2 cos cube x minus cos x. And when we expand in this now, we have minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. But then it is minus 2 times cos x, which is minus 2 cos x. Remember, we're multiplying. We multiply the minus 2 times 1. And then we multiply the minus two times the cos x to get minus two cos x. Then the minus two times the minus cos square is plus two cos square. And then plus two cos square times cos x becomes plus two cos cube. Plus two cos cube x. All right, nice and easy. And so now we have two cos cube x 
plus a 2 cos cube x. When we add those two together, what we're getting is 4 cos cube x. This becomes 4 cos cube x. 4 cos cube x. And then what we have now is minus cos x minus 2 cos x. Those two together becomes minus 3 cos x. Is that what we have? I'm sure that is what they want us to prove. Yes, that is what they want to prove. And that is equivalent to our right hand side. Nice and easy, soft. That's equivalent to your right hand side. So you can just write down easily brushed aside. Easily brushed, easily brushed aside. And nice. So good with this question, no issues whatsoever. Let's look at part two now. Part two. Part two now we have that. Hence or otherwise solve cos 6x minus cos 2x. So we need to solve cos 6x. Solving cos 6x minus cos 2x. Solving cos 6x minus cos 2x. And we're solving that equal to zero. Solving cos 6x minus cos 2x equal to zero. All right. And it says hence. Hence means we're going to utilize the knowledge that we have from above. Now, since it says hence, the only thing I can see is that I can separate cos 6x. Well, I'm not even going to use the hence. We can use hence, but I'm going to go with otherwise because I know that this is the difference of two cos. You could go with hence by separating this as cos 4x plus 2x. And then you know that cos 4x from around here is 4 cos cube x minus 3 cos x. But I don't want to go that route. That seems more tedious. I'm going to go this route. The route I want to go is this route. The route I want to go is this route where I'm going to use that the difference of two cos is given by minus twice the sign. So it's minus twice the sign of half the sum. So it's minus sine of half the sum, which is 6x plus 2x divided by 2 times the sine of half the difference, which is times the sine of half the difference. Half the difference is 6x minus 2x over 2. And that is, of course, equal to 0. Nice and easy. So now what we're getting then is if we divide through by minus 2, we're going to get that the sine of 6x plus 2x is 8x. 8x over 2 is 4x. That becomes the sine of 4x. Then the sine of now 6x minus 2x is 4x. 4x over 2 is 2x. This becomes sine 4x times sine 2x. Of course, they had the times of minus 2, and this is equal to 0. So if this is equal to 0, the only way this can be equal to 0, it can't be the minus 2 fault make it be 0. So it must be that sine 4x equals 0 or sine 2x equals 0. So all we have to do now is write that down. So it's either sine 4x is equal to 0, so it's either sine, why is it still in caps? Sine 4x is equal to 0, or sine 2x is equal to 0. That's what we have. It's one of those two. Now, if it is sine 4x equal to 0, then this is, you can draw a circle. Draw a circle for me. All right, and split up your quadrants. Split up your quadrants, all right? If sine 4x is equal to 0, 0 is in the first quadrant, so your principal acute angle is going to be sine inverse of 0, which is 0. 
sine inverse of zero is zero, all right? Always remember that sine inverse of zero is zero, all right? But then remember sine is positive in the first quadrant and sine is positive in the second quadrant. So what you're getting then is 4x, 4x is equal to zero or 4x is equal to pi minus zero, which is pi. But remember knowing that since it is 4x, you want your answer to be between zero and two pi. So you can spin around the circle one more time to get that. If you go around the circle one more time, you're gonna get two pi plus zero, which is two pi. You have to go around the circle one more time. All right, and you go around the circle one more time to get the two pi plus pi is three pi. So you're gonna get three pi. All right, now let's see. Since it's it has four x here, I think we can spin around the circle four times. So let's go around the circle another time. This is gonna be the third time. Going around the circle again, you have two pi plus pi. Two pi plus pi is four pi. So four pi can be a part of the solution. And then this three pi plus two pi is five pi. So go around the circle three times so far. Let's go around the circle four times now. Going around the circle the fourth time, all right, we're gonna get this four pi plus two pi is six pi. All right, that's six pi. And then this five pi plus two pi is seven pi, all right? And let's go around the circle one last time, a, five, a fifth time, going around the circle one last time. What we're gonna get is six pi plus two pi is eight pi, and seven pi plus pi is nine pi. So these are all the possible values for four x. Now we're gonna divide two by four, so dividing through by four, that implies that x is equal to zero over four, comma, pi over four, pi over four. Two pi over four is gonna be pi by two. So we can write that pi by two. Then three pi over four is gonna be three pi by four. Then four pi by four is gonna be pi it's gonna be pi, then five pi over four, that's gonna be five pi by four. Then we're gonna have six pi over four, which is six pi by four. And six, six pi by four, yeah, let me just write it as six pi by four. You can simplify it a little bit more, but write it as three pi by two. Then you're gonna have seven pi by four, all right? And then after you have seven pi by four, you're gonna have eight pi by four, which is two pi. But we can stop right here. We can stop right here. Why can we stop right here? Because nine pi by four is gonna be bigger than two pi. So this one is not valid. So this one is not valid. That one, not valid. All right? So those are all the values of x we get from this solution. Let's solve sine 2x equals zero now and look at the solutions we're getting. So for the next part, we're solving sine 2x is equal to zero. Solving sine 2x equal to zero. Again, the two possible answers that we're gonna get is 2x is equal to zero or 2x is equal to pi, all right? Now we can go around the circle one more time. By going around the circle one more time, we're gonna get two x is equal to, going around the circle one more time, we'll get zero plus two pi, which is two pi. All right, we can go around the circle one more time to get four pi, and then we'll stop there. And from over here now, we can go around the circle one more time to get that two x is equal to, Go around the circle one more time, you have pi. The next thing you're gonna have is three pi. So you divide through by two now, divide through by two, and so 
from this part of the solution, we're getting x is equal to zero or two pi over two is pi or four pi over two is two pi. And from this side, you're getting that x is equal to divide by two, you get pi by two. And divide by two, you get three pi by four. Now, all of these answers that we'll get right here, these are already in the solutions up here. And so this is the final answer up here. All of these are the final answers, all right? All of these is the final answer, all right? So that's the answer, zero pi by four, pi by two, three pi by four, pi, five pi by four, all of that stuff. That's that. Nice and easy, soft. Well, let's go to the next part of the question. The next part of the question, part B. Part B, it is saying that we need to express f of two theta in the form three sine two theta plus four cos two theta. That's f of, this is f of two theta f of 2 theta is equal to f of 2 theta is equal to 3 sine 2 theta 3 sine 2 theta plus 4 cos 2 theta we need to express it in the r sine form so in order to express it in the r sine form the first thing we have to remember is that r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So r is gonna be equal to the square root of three squared plus four square, square rooted. All right, so when you work that out, you're gonna get five, that is r. And the next thing we need to find is alpha. Alpha is gonna be tan inverse of b over a. That's alpha. Alpha is tan inverse b over a, which is tan inverse of four over three. Tan inverse of four over three, we can work that out. So we get in tan inverse of four over three, tan inverse of four over three, 0 0.927. That's tan inverse four over three, 0 0.927. All right, that's tan inverse of four over three. All right, nice. Alpha, tan inverse four over three, good. So now we can finally put it in the correct form. F of two theta, and so F of two theta is equal to five sine, so it's five sine two theta, plus alpha, so it's five sine two theta plus 0 0.927. All right, that's f of two theta. Nice and easy, soft. That's f of two theta. They're giving away six marks to do this. I don't know why, but they gave us six marks and we have it done and dusted, all right? Nice and easy. The next part say hence or otherwise, find the maximum and minimum values of one or one minus seven f of theta. Now, first thing we can start with is that f of theta, f of theta will be bounded between, and I think that should have been f of two theta. f of theta will be bounded between r and minus r. R is five, so F of theta is bounded between five and minus five. Then what we can do next is divide through by minus to get that minus F of theta. Anytime you do division by minus one, you change the sign, all right? So it becomes minus five by minus one is five, and then five divided by minus one is minus five. So this is minus F of theta. Then we add seven to both sides to say that seven minus F of theta. 
seven minus f of theta will be bounded between b less than or equal to add seven to both sides. Seven plus five is 12. Seven plus minus five is two. All right. And then we, then we know reciprocate it. When you reciprocate it, the signs will change again. So the signs will change again. This part becomes one over two. We reciprocate this to get one over seven minus f of theta. And then we reciprocate the other one now. And so we're gonna get one over 12. That's one over 12, nice. All right. And so what can we conclude? We can conclude that the maximum is going to be a half and the minimum is one over 12. And so, hence, the maximum will be one over two and the minimum, the minimum will be one upon 12, all right? Nice and easy, soft. That's what we have. That's the max and that's the min. And that takes care of question three, very easy, soft. Now we can go to question four. Question four says, the, cart, the circles C1 and C2 are defined by the parametric equation as follows. C1 is x equal to root 10 cos theta minus three, y is root 10 sine theta plus two. And C2 is another parametric equation. And from C1 and C2, it said determine the Cartesian equation of both of them. So let's do that, all right? So we have C1. C1 is such that we have x is equal to root 10, root 10 cos theta, root 10 cos theta minus three. And we have y is equal to root 10 sine theta plus two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna make cos theta and sine theta the subject. All right, you might wonder why. You'll see why soon. We add three to both sides, add three to both sides, and then we divide by root 10. And so we have x plus three over root 10 is equal to cos theta going to give us cos theta, all right? And over here now, we subtract two from both sides to get y minus two, divide by the root of 10, and that is equal to sine theta. This is sine theta. Now that we get this now, all right, what do we do next? We square both sides. That's the next thing that we do. We square both sides. By squaring both sides, you are going to get that cos square theta. Squaring both sides, you get cos square theta is equal to x plus three, all square over root 10 square is 10, all right? So that's cos square theta. Over here now, you're gonna get that when you square both sides, you're gonna get that sine square theta over sine square theta is equal to y minus two all square over the root of 10 square is just 10, all right? But then what do we know? We know from add math days, this identity, we know that sine square theta sine square theta plus cos square theta. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one. We know this identity from ADMATH. And so since sine square theta, since sine square theta plus cos square theta equal one, and we have an expression for cos square theta, 
and we have an expression for sine squared theta. And what that means then is x plus three squared, x plus three squared over 10, x plus three squared over 10, plus y minus two squared over 10, y minus two squared over 10, that's equal to one. All right, so we can multiply through by 10. And so the Cartesian equation of C1 is given by, when we multiply through by 10, we're gonna get x plus three all square. x plus three all square plus y minus two all square. And that's equal to 10. That's equal to 10. All right, nice and easy. Soft. Now, since I said to write it in the form r squared, then you can rewrite this as root 10 all squared. Instead of saying 10, write it as root 10 all squared. All right? And that is for C1. We're going to do the same for C2. So let's do the same for C2. For C2, they give us 4 cos theta plus 3. They give us 4 cos theta plus 3 is equal to x. And so all we need to do is make cos theta the subject. Making cos theta the subject, we're going to get cos theta. We're going to get cos theta is equal to, we subtract 3 from both sides. So we get x minus 3, and then we divide through by 4. To get cos theta is x minus 3 over 4. And then over here now, this is x, and this is y over here. And it told us that y is 4 sine theta plus 2. So we have 4 sine theta plus 2. And this is equal to y. So we need to make sine theta the subject. To make sine theta the subject, we're gonna get that the sine of theta is equal to y minus two, y minus two divided by four. That's going to be the sine of theta. So since this is the sine of theta, which is y minus two divided by four, all right, this is sine theta and this is cos theta. Now we can go ahead, now we can go ahead. We have cos theta, we have sine theta. Now we can go ahead and use the identity that we know that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. Cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one. All right, since cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one, this implies that cos theta is going to be x minus three over four all square plus sine squared theta is going to be y minus two over four all square And that's equal to one. So all we need to do now is multiply through by four square. When we multiply through by four square, we're gonna get x minus three all square plus y minus two all square. And that's equal to four square, all right? And that takes care of part one. All right, nice and easy, soft. Let's look at part two. Part two says, hence, find the point of intersection between the two. Find the point of intersection. So let's go back and write down the two equations. This is one of them. One equation that we have is x minus three, x minus three all square 
plus y minus two all square. And we have that that's equal to four squared, that is really 16, all right? And another equation that we have is around here, it is x plus three plus x minus two, x plus three squared plus y minus two all square is 10, all right? Let's write down the next equation over here. Next equation we have over here is x plus three squared plus, what was that? Y minus two plus Y minus two all square plus Y minus two square is equal to 10. So we need to solve these two equations. To solve them, the first thing I'm going to do is expand them, all right? We need to expand them first. So we need to get them from the standard form to the general form. The general form for the first one will be x squared minus 6x plus 9, x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared minus 4y plus 4, and that's equal to 16, all right? That's the first equation in general form. This equation in general form will be x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus y squared minus 4y plus four is equal to 10, all right? That's equal to 10. So to find the points of intersection now, we're gonna solve these two equations simultaneously. To solve them simultaneously, what we're gonna do is let's subtract them. Let's subtract these two equations. So we're gonna subtract them. And what we're gonna get is x squared minus x squared gone minus 6x minus 6x become minus 12x. Then we're gonna have nine minus nine, nine minus nine cancel. Y squared minus y squared cancel. Minus four y minus minus four y. Minus and minus give us plus, so that's four y minus four y that cancel. Four minus four, let's go again, four minus four, that goes away too and then six minus 10, six minus 10 is six. So we get minus 12 X is equal to six. So we can divide through by minus 12 and say so X equal negative a half. X equal negative a half. Now that we get X equal negative a half, we need to find out what's the Y value. So we can plug in X be negative a half into any one of these two equations to find the y value. All right, so let's plug it in the first equation. So plugging it in the first equation, you can use either this equation or this, doesn't matter. Plugging it in the first equation, you're gonna have minus a half minus three, minus a half minus three square plus y minus two, all square, that's equal to 16, all right? This is when we put x as minus half. So we put x as minus half into the first equation. Put in x as minus a half, all right? Put in x as minus a half, as we can see, Equation will simplify now to just be minus a half minus three all square minus a half minus three all square. This part works out to be 12 and a quarter. So we get 12 and a quarter plus y minus two all square. plus y minus two all square, we get that's equal to 16. 
So all you have to do now is subtract 12 and a quarter from both sides to get. That implies y minus two square, y minus two square is equal to 16 minus 12 and a quarter. So work out what is 16 minus 12 and a quarter. I get three and three quarter. And so then what you do is square root both sides. So you square root both sides to get now y minus two is equal to plus or minus. Remember when you square root, you get two values. Square root of three and three quarter. I get one point. Let me see if I can leave it as a third. I'm not gonna write three and three quarter. This is 12, 15 over four. This is 15 over four. And so it is plus or minus the square root of 15 over four, which is known as the square root of 15 over two. So it's plus or minus the square root of 15 over two. So that implies that y is equal to, you're gonna get two values for y. Y is either equal to two plus the root of 15 over two, two plus the root of 15 over two, Y is equal to two plus the root of 15 over two, or y is equal to two minus the root of 15 over two. All right, those are the points of intersection. So in conclusion, you can write them down now. Points of intersection are, you can just give them it in a nice little way. Points of intersection are, we're gonna give them the coordinates. You have when X is minus a half, you have minus a half, comma, you have two minus the root of 15 over two. That's one point of intersection. Or the next point of intersection is minus a half, comma, two plus the root of 15 over two, all right? Now this question may have seemed challenging, but I want you to get the picture in your head, all right? Now, based on the two equations that we have, we had two circles. This is a circle with center three, two, and this is a circle with center minus three, two radius of four and a radius of root 10. So I'm gonna show you a schematic of what you, we had. So in reality, we have a circle. Let me draw a circle. So this is graphically. So I'm gonna show you graphically what we have. This is graphically. It's always good to get a picture of what's going on graphically. Graphically, what we have is we have a circle. Let me make it smaller so I can fit both circles on the page. All right, so graphically, the first circle that we have, the center was three, two. This is a center of three, two. and it had a radius of four. All right, that's what we had. Now look at this one now. This one is a circle with center minus three, two and a radius of root 10, minus three. So minus three would be, if this is positive three minus three somewhere over here. So we have another circle somewhere over here looking something like this with a smaller radius. So another circle somewhere right there. Let me move it over a little. Let me move it over, please. Let me move it over. So 
just like this is the circle that we have and this right here is the circle minus three and the y value is still two and this radius is just the root of 10. This radius is the root of 10, all right? So this is the circle that we have, all right? These are the two circles. This is gonna be C2 and this is C1. For persons that love to see axis, I can put on an axis just for you, right? So your X axis would be, and X is zero, zero would be somewhere right here. This is your X axis, all right? This is your x-axis, all right? And your y-axis is somewhere right here. All right, this is your x and this is your y and they intersect Let me move over this circle a little bit better. This all oh, this doesn't look quite right. All right, and these are the two points of intersection with the same X values. Let me put it in red. These are the two points of intersection, X being minus a half, X being right here, All right? And that's that. This center, center of this circle is minus three, two. So something like this is how they look. Something like this is not accurate. All right, so one of them is when X is minus a half. Both of them have the same X value, but the Y value is different. This is gonna be the two plus root 15 over two. This is a two plus minus root 15 over two. All right, so this is just graphically what is happening. I really hope this makes it a lot more clear, nice and easy. Now let's look at part B. Part B is locus. Part B is locus, all right? Part B says a point P of X moves so that it is distance from the fixed point zero three is two times the distance from a fixed point five two. Show that the equation of the locus of the point P of X is a circle. So anytime I get a question I like with locus, I just like to sketch what is going on. It's always good to see what is going on. So I like to put a X and a Y axis. I know it sounds crazy, but I like to see what's going on. You have the point zero three, X is zero, Y is three. I can call this point A. You can reference it if you want. The point A is the point zero three. And I have the point B. And I have the point B that is five, two. Five, two can be somewhere like five. This is two. This can be B, somewhere right here. B is the point five, two, all right? And it says you have some point P. You have some point P that is moving so that the distance from the fixed point zero, three is two times the distance from the point five, two. So the distance right here, the distance from P to A is two times the distance from here. So what they're saying is the distance PA is equal to two times PB. Now we don't know where P is. I'm gonna put some possibility where P could be. Two times this distance must be this distance. So let's say 
2 of PB will make it equal to PA. So if A is, I want it to be twice it, let me see. If P is here, like let's use this for example, let's say P is here. This is just a rough estimate. Let's say P is here. Then this distance PB is a half this distance PA. That's a possibility. Now let's say P is here. P could be here. These are just possibilities. If P is here, then this distance here is a half this distance here, all right? That's all we know, that wherever P is, wherever P is, we know that the distance PA is two times the distance PB, all right? So now let's use, we know how to find the distance between two lines. Going back to CSEC maths, it's the square root of X1 minus X2, all square. So it's gonna be, P is the point X, Y, all right? And so it is, x minus zero, so it's really x minus zero square plus y minus three square plus y minus three square. And that is equal to two times the distance from P to B. So it's two times the distance of P to B and the distance of P to B is x minus five square, x minus five square, plus that's gonna be y minus two square. Now, what we can do now is, I'm gonna continue it, but I'm just gonna close off up here, all right? So I'm gonna continue by squaring both sides. So continuing down here, all right, continuing down here, continue all the way down here. By continuing, I'm gonna square both sides. By squaring both sides, I am getting that x squared plus y minus three all squared is equal to two square and two square is four. So it's equal to four times all of what's in here, which is four times x minus five square plus y minus two all square. Notice I put b at the wrong spot because I put it in the negative axis. B should have been above, somewhere up here. All right, so notice that I put it the wrong place. So the only thing I could do to make this a little better is move the x-axis, maybe like this. Yeah, so that's not too bad. All right. So now we're gonna have to expand out all of this. By expanding out all of this, and you might wonder why are we expanding? We want to show that the locus is a circle. If the locus is a circle, then it will take the form x minus a square plus y minus b square is equal to r square. All right, so that's what we're trying to show. So we're gonna get x square plus y square minus six y plus nine. And that is equal to four times. If we expand out this side over here, it's going to be x squared minus 10x, x squared minus 10x plus five squared is 25 plus y squared minus, let me see, plus y squared minus, that looks like four y plus four. That is what we have. All right, good. Now just to clean this up a little bit more, what we're getting then is x squared plus y squared minus six y 
plus nine, that is equal to four times x squared is four x squared. Then four times minus 10 x is minus 40 x. Then we have four times 25 is 100. We get plus 100. Then we have four times y squared is plus four y squared. And then we have four times minus y is minus 16 y plus four times four is plus 16. All right, that's what we have. Now, what do we do next now? We can bring everything to one side. So I'm going to make the left-hand side be zero. So zero is equal to subtracting x squared from both sides. I get three x squared. Subtracting the y squares, I'm going to get plus three y squared. Subtracting six y, I'm going to get minus 16 y plus six y. So over here becomes minus 10 y. Then I put back the minus 40 x. All right. And then I have nine over here. So I'm gonna subtract nine from both mm -hmm. sides. But I have 100 plus a 16, which is 116. Then I subtract nine. So this becomes 107. Over here, that becomes plus 107, and that's equal to zero. So what do we do now? We can then divide this equation by three. Let's do that around here. Dividing through the equation by three, we're gonna divide through by three. So what we're gonna get is, let's put the zero on the opposite side now. All right, dividing through by three, we're gonna get x cubed, not x cubed, x squared, my apologies, plus y squared. Then dividing 40x by three, we get minus 40x over three, or some people might write it as minus 40 over three times x. Then we're gonna divide the y now, by three, so we're gonna get minus 10. We're gonna get minus 10 over three times y. And then we're gonna have, get the number now, 107 divided by three, so we have plus 107 divided by three, and that is equal to zero. So now when we have this now, all we need to do now is Put this in standard form to see if it's a circle. Right, I cannot tell if this is a circle yet. So I need to put it in standard form. To put it in standard form, I'm gonna complete the square for the X terms. So I'm completing the square for this and this. So it's gonna be completing the square. I'm gonna have X minus half of this is 40 over six. This is 40 over six square and then I subtract 40 over 6 square plus completing the square for these two terms now I'm going to have y minus 10 over 6 y minus 10 over 6 square and then I subtract back 10 over 6 square. And that's equal to, or oh, put, put back the plus 107 over 3, and that's equal to 0. Now I'm going to put it in the standard form of a circle. So it's x minus. 40 over six is really 20 over three. So X minus 20 over three square plus put this part now, which is now Y minus 10 over six is really divide both by two, 10 over, that's five over three. It's Y minus five over three square. Then I have 
this minus 40 minus 40 over 6 square this part works out to be this part right here works out to be minus 44 and 4 over 9 this works out to be minus 44 and 4 over 9 then this part right here works out to be this look like minus 100 minus 100 over 36 all right and then plus 107 over 3 so all i need to do now is add up these three terms i'm good we'll add up these three terms on gucci we're nice so let's add up these three terms and see what we get so finally what we get now is x minus 20 over 3 x minus 20 over 3 square x minus 20 over 3 square plus y minus 5 over 3 square and adding up all of these and i'm going to put equal to so we're going to bring it bring the sum over to here so we have minus 44 and 4 over 9 minus 100 over 36 plus 107 over 3 all right and we'll bring it over here we're getting 11 and 5 over 9 so over here we're getting 11 and 5 over 9 all right and so hence this is clearly a circle so hence we can write it hence hence the locus is a circle hence the locus is clearly a circle and it is a circle with center it is a cir locus is a circle with center 20 over 3 comma 5 over 3 and a radius of the square root of 11 and 5 over 9 and a radius of the square root of 11 and 5 over 9 whatever that is that's the radius all right hence it's a the locus is a circle nice and easy soft and this takes care of question two and so this takes care of module two nice and easy let's go to module three all right so you sip some water and you go to module three so go to module